Welcome to Groundhog Day. It's Friday, February 2nd, 2024. This forecast brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism. Reminding you that as, even as temperatures get colder and the snow is on the horizon at Thermopolis, you can always find yourself in some relaxing hot water. Check them out at thermopolis.com. Well, storms and shadows. Going to describe what's going to be happening here over the next several days. The West Coast just pounded over the last couple of days and that weather now is headed east. That's Lander Lil. We'll find out later today whether or not Lander Lil, the western version of Puxitani Phil, whether or not a shadow will show up or not. We'll see. In this part of the country, there's always six more weeks of winter if you start on February 2nd. What we're going to see is thickening clouds and wet weather west of the divide today. The heavy precipitation moving out of California into the Great Basin. So across the Great Basin states, the southwest United States, it's rain and snow. That is going to get pushed up against the Continental Divide today. Then we're going to see areas of rain, snow, fog developing later today, tonight, and it's going to last through Sunday as we get along and east of the divide as the moisture comes over. And as we've been discussing, since there's no connection to Canadian air with this storm, it's all Pacific and some Gulf of Mexico, we're going to have very high snow levels. It's also going to be really soupy. I want to make it uh, clear to folks who are going to be traveling, it's going to get soupy. There's going to be uh, very poor visibility in some areas. The southeast flow going uphill and upslope will produce low stratus clouds and fog that could be really dense in areas along and east of the mountain ranges and especially on the southeast ends of them. So travelers, it, it's going to be more of a soupy slushy situation than hard packed snow and conditions that we sometimes would see in a February storm. So travel interests and livestock interests be prepared. We're going to see another West Coast storm pound California. As we get into the latter half of the weekend and early next week, we'll show you that. That's going to be a newsmaker. And then the remains of that storm come across the Rockies for more snow chances and colder weather towards the middle of next week. So say goodbye to these fair days and these sunrises and sunsets as we're about ready to go into a different configuration. The satellite imagery today is a little bit more chaotic. Here's the bigger low that's going to hang off the northwest coast for a while. This comes into play later. This is what uh, is coming. The remains of the California storm uh, right here. It's it, like I said, it's diffuse. It's kind of getting itself disorganized going through the terrain, but will reform. And then we're going to have that low forming here overnight tonight into Saturday morning. Notice the blue. I want you to notice the blue here in the southeast parts of Texas. The blue here forming across portions of Nebraska into the Dakotas. The blue you're seeing is low cloudiness, either stratus clouds or fog or both. And notice the trend is like this. Okay, so the flow, the counterclockwise spin from that low and the high that's here working in unison. That's what we've been showing you. So now what we do is we're seeing it on satellite imagery. So we're seeing it verify in terms of that moisture coming northwestward out of those areas, slowly coming this way. At the same time, the Pacific energy and moisture is coming in off the west coast. So there's a little bit of a collision coming together, that convergence we've talked about between these two air masses. This is where we have advisories for winter weather across the west. You see now we've got an expansion and you can see where the mountains are going to get into a better situation of snow across the west here over the next 48 hours with all of that purple and the pink there being advisories. The gray, those are fog advisories. So you can see right there, expect this area of fogginess to slowly the axis of it to head westward by tonight and into early Saturday. So this is where we are now with the low going across near Las Vegas. And this is where it's going to be by tomorrow morning, right over extreme southeastern Colorado and northern New Mexico. That's about where everything has looked all week. So a lot of consistency. So through Sunday, 5 p.m. Through Sunday, 5 p.m., this is the precipitation forecast across the west. This is the blend of all the modeling. So you can see the pipeline of moisture here 
Coming up into the region, the darker blues and the yellows show where the heavier precipitation is going to form. So it looks like the southern and eastern Black Hills. This is where the, the Black Hills, the south and the eastern exposed ridges and hills there will get the heavier precipitation. The northwest part of the Black Hills, not so much. But wherever there's terrain that you're going to have a southeast flow intersecting is where the better and heavier moisture will be. We still have this hole right here in southwestern Wyoming where a southeast wind is downslope off the central Rockies of Colorado into there, so there won't be as much. But nonetheless, this will be a, a decent amount of precipitation. Nice to see we need it in those areas. And the mountain ranges are going to do well. Montana will do well. And a lot of this that you see out here east is all going to be in the form of rain. There you can see the snow levels are going to be high. Mainly as you get above five, 6,000 feet is where you're going to be looking at the heavier snow accumulations. And there's going to be that axis there where the pink is showing where that heavier moisture will be. And then huge amounts of snow in the Sierra Nevada. I want to talk a little bit about the fog because I do think this is going to be a travel concern developing as early as tonight and into tomorrow morning. What you're seeing here in the numbers is the prediction of visibility in miles in some locations. But just to grab a few, so you see lots of ones. Now you see some zeros like 0.64 Cheyenne, 0.4 there near Wheatland. What that means is you're going to have extremely low visibility on Interstate 80 between Laramie and Cheyenne. Very low visibilities between Rollins and Laramie around Arlington and Elk Mountain. Very low visibilities back over here, as well as low visibility in a stretch in that southeast flow. Burlington, Colorado, two tenths of a mile. So soupy. So along the interstates, it may not be raining or snowing very hard, but you're not going to be able to see very well. So you're going to need to allow some extra time. And that area of dense fog, low clouds, really intensifies across portions of Nebraska and South Dakota during Saturday afternoon and evening. Now I'm going to animate the 500 millibar chart here uh, starting Monday and going into the middle of the week. What I want you to notice is the strong flow of air coming in off the Pacific right here into California. I'll show you that here in a minute. So we're going to see another wave come into the West Coast. We're also going to see the remnants come into the Intermountain West as we get to the middle of the week. So this will bring another round of weather our way. This really strong flow of winds coming in right here is just like a fire hose into parts of the Intermountain West and the West Coast. And if you can see the animated view now between now and late Sunday afternoon of the precipitation, you can see how it develops. In the later frames here, you can see the precipitation really increasing across California. Then it's going to start to spread back again into the Intermountain West. So there's a lot going on here over the next week. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. Watch right here. See this? This is going to be developing later this weekend and moving into Central and Southern California, then spreading eastward again. And I want to show you this area right here in Southern California that we're going to stay ahead of the news here because you're going to hear about it. The 500 millibar chart or the 500 millibar winds. So these are winds at around 18,000 feet or so. This is by Monday morning. So these are strong winds coming out over the Pacific, driving moisture right into the central and southern areas of California into the southwestern United States. Now, for those of you familiar with Southern California, there's a part of Southern California here where the coast, the coast is more east-west. It's not north-south. So when you bring these strong winds into the east-west mountain ranges in Southern California here, around Ventura, around Ojai, down into the LA Basin there near Santa Barbara, just think about this as like an east-west mountain range and this is upslope at perpendicular. So it's just driving moisture with a very strong upslope component into those coastal ranges. So that's going to be, you know, six, seven, eight inches of rain on top of what they've already picked up. There it is. So you can see that area right there. Then remember, what's left of that, what doesn't get caught by the coastal ranges, heads inland and will help boost the snowpack. So it's going to be a very interesting scenario developing this weekend and into next week. A lot to talk about on Monday. We'll see you then.